Yonder peak will never be scaled by mortal man. Zebulon M. Pike was a lieutenant in the United States Army when he made that prediction back in November of 806. In his unsuccessful attempt to climb it, Lieutenant Pike got no closer than 12 miles away from the peak which bears his name. Today, Pike's Peak is visited by many thousands of Americans annually, powering grandstand, 14,108 feet above sea level. From the top, the range of visibility on a clear day extends for over a hundred miles. A short distance east from the foot of the peak lies the city of Colorado Springs, county seat of El Paso County. One of the country's favorite health and vacation resorts, the city is famed for the colorful flower beds along its broad street. Also famous the world over is the Broadmoor Hotel, seen here from across Broadmoor Lake. Motorists from every state find Colorado Springs an ideal starting point for trips to many nearby points of interest. One of the most unusual is the Garden of the Gods. 500 acres of great rocks and ridges of brightly colored sandstone. The grotesque shapes and fantastic arrangement suggest a playground of supernatural beings. I never met a man I didn't like, said Will Rogers. Today, he is immortalized by the Will Rogers Shrine to the Sun, another great attraction for Colorado visitors. And of course, with practically every visitor driving a car, it's Pike's Peak or Bus. Even at the maximum speed limit of 20 miles an hour, driving the famous Pikes Peak Auto Highway built in 1915 is a thrilling experience. Glen Cove offers a welcome stopping place on the way up what is probably the world's steepest 20 miles of highway. Then more hairpin turns, switchbacks, steep grades. This is the scene of the annual 12 and a half mile Pikes Peak climb. The progress of the race is followed by radio equipment and a trailer parked at the starting line. Nearby is the pagoda for the officials in charge of starting and timing each entrance run. Right now, it's still a long way to race day, but leading drivers from all over the country already are busy trying out the course. It's a trying test of driving nerve and skill, of cars and engines too. It takes top-notch performance to make a showing because of the high altitude and the wide differences in temperature that can occur during the race. Cars are adjusted, tuned, brought to the peak of perfection. There's no second chance in this grueling run. 
If your engine quits, you're out of the race till next year. You've got to be sure of the finest lubrication to avoid breakdown and to get the peak performance and speed it takes to win. The order of starting is determined by qualification run. Road and weather conditions can become much worse as the race goes on, so competition for early starting places is as great as during the race itself. Labor Day finds cars from all over the country, carrying more than 30,000 fans to the spine-tingling Pikes Peak Hill climb. Spectators drive up the road, searching for preferred positions from which to watch the race. Ten minutes before the start of the race, the official pay post to make its run. Then the first car makes its fly 200 yards, and the race is underway. At each race that passes start its way, they know how many cars are on the course at any one time. Many cars never make it to the top. Jimmy Good and number four rolled over halfway up and the race is held up until he's brought back down. Then the drivers get underway again at five minute intervals in this grinding race against time. The exact time at which each car starts is recorded on an electric timer. A similar device shows the time each car crosses the finish line. can see, making good time in this course takes plenty of nerve and skill. From speeds of as much as 100 miles an hour on the straightaways, the cars slow down almost to a dead stop when they plow into a switchback or sharp curve, of which there are 165. It's obvious that making good time in this race calls for accurate judgment on the exact speed with which a curve can be taken without sliding over the edge. It also takes fast acceleration to pick up high speed on a straightaway after braking sharply for a hairpin turn or switchback. Jumping from high speed to low, then swiftly back to high again is the toughest kind of punishment a car can take. And in this race, that happens not once, but again and again and again. Under such conditions, nothing but the very finest motor oil can protect engines properly and safely.
Over the top and across the finishing line they come after completing the most punishing climb in the world of racing. Third best time is made by Herb Ryers driving car number seven. Second place is taken by Luan who makes it in reverse back to the finish line. And the winner, Al Rogers, making it a clean sweep for mobile oil, the motor oil used in the first three cars. Outstanding choice for dependable performance under the toughest conditions. It's a great thrill for Rogers to win the world's most spectacular uphill race. It's another hard-won victory over the rugged, picturesque peak that has conquered so many, including its discoverer, in the attempt to make the big climb.